So we're at the C, and what I want to do that is that that note that's here. Yeah. Well, you can see the underline here. You see the red underline of those two the C's? The top this one here, and then this one over here. They're the same note. So when you go through the scale and you see these, it's, it's one has to figure out where it is, right? So then you start the next one. So the staffs delineate where they are in relative, in relative sound. And it's just it's a simple scale. So this is a starting point. Again, this is sort of intro to when you when music's written, when we talked about why we need it, now it's a matter of okay, so what do these things look like? Musical notation. Uh, this is an example we're going to go through a little bit more. I'll show a few points on this. Um, this version here is written in the key of F, B flat, which is that flat sitting there is what's used in, in that particular key. Uh, and we have different kinds of notes here. So uh, a, a, this is a half note, half meaning it's if you have four, 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 four times, so it's four eighth notes to make up a bar. These are bars, or measure, in the, the terminology used. These are actually bars here, the measure is that part in between. And so we, we, we just look at the different timing. So each of these different notes talks about different timing. So we talk, and here we've got most of them, the ones that are commonly used until you get to a lot faster uh, timing. So here's a whole load, which is all four notes at once, it takes once. But we're going to hear this, this tune later, so we'll hear some of that. Most of you probably know it already. Um, a little bit just about what they look like. So, this is an example of that simple tune, just the melody of it. And the other thing we've done is we, this is also noting the chords that go with it. So, uh, an F chord might be used from guitar or a piano to accompany this. It's not going to do it. In fact, I think we'll see we have some of that later. So just gives you an idea. This is this is, this is a symbol for a rest. It's in fact, if you see, this is four eighth notes. So there's one, two, three eighth notes here plus the rest, that's, which makes that a four four time up. Not very complex. I'm not going to go into a theory about music and notes and that. It's just to show you what, what they look like. And that's this is read from the most musicians can read this. Not all, but most can. ABC scores. This is the next one. Here's the same tune. Uh, that has been scored by um, somebody who, who reads music but is doing it differently. And this is how they're writing it out. So this is exactly the same one. And so I'll point out a couple of things. I pointed out that, that the chord in the first place. And you'll see on this ABC, if you go down to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth line, first of all, it's K means key of F. The next line here, you see the F in quotations, that's that chord. And then these are actually the notes uh, in, in terms of positions, relative positions on that keyboard. So they talk about uh, an F6, a G2, it depends on where it is on the board. A4, A2, A2, but you'll, you'll see it when you go to the place. But that's one mechanism that's recorded and is used by an awful lot of uh, parts to, to record, to write down what it is. It's not necessarily what people always play from. In fact, part of what you'll see is a way to translate this into uh, uh, the sheet music sort of thing that we saw earlier. But this is how it's maintained. But there's a lot of information in here. It says it's a real, it's a uh, little drummer boy, it's 4 4 timing on it, and it says the bass note on it, the bass uh, starting point on it is, is uh, 1 8. So that's the mark that starts. And who's, who recorded this or who, who was doing it? Of course, it's electronic, so you're seeing a, 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 a Rogers. Quite possibly. Anyway, here are the lyrics for that same tune, uh, handwritten out, in the sense of that there's uh, to match it, to read it. So most of us, when we sing things, we will read that, we will get the idea of mail in our head, and then once we see the words, it just makes it really easy to remember. <coughs> for guitar, uh, and I want to look at the, 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 the 
the idea of a guitar tax. So literally on a guitar you have a number of frets, and each fret is these bars that, that are going across the uh, so what do we call the fingerboard? Gary, what do we call what do we call it on the guitar? So the fingerboard? Neck. Neck. Well, it's a neck, yeah. Fred. Fredboard, thank you. Fred. Yeah, perfect. Kills <laughs> friends. Makes sense. I don't play guitar, so I have to ask the question. But well, what's important here is as you see there's there's six strings, and what the people have done this to, to show how to play this as a starting point, they've labeled them with all the uh, the basic open note. Uh, frequencies on them, so what, what notes play is you just plug the string. So there's E through E, different different uh, uh, levels of them. And then all the frets going down, which are all bars that change to different frequencies, go down. And I guess the dots are also to help uh, position you as well. I believe you'll find that these end up being essentially, because it's every second one, for the most part, we're going to find that these are even the even notes as opposed to the semitones or full tones. Pretty sure that's right. I'm going to be that up. However, here's an example of guitar tab. And the reason why I showed you the frets in the first place is it looks almost, almost like the frets on the instrument. Uh, so what they're showing here, though, is the, those eyes that you see going up and down there are actually showing. It's actually showing bars, and the number is showing which fret to play at which timing within that bar. So if you look at a lot of the music we saw in the first place in 4 4 timing, you still have four open notes, for example, here. And at the same time, they're playing, uh, I'm blocking out, I'm quite sure how it's being played in this, but it's probably the same tune again. Um, playing the uh, E on the, second, on the second fret. So it's a way of reading it, and it makes it simpler, fairly simple for a lot of guitar players to play with this. So it's quite different. Drum notation. This is even more odd <laughs> since I can play the drums. I know a little bit about this one. In this case, what we're seeing is all the symbols that are using symbols that are using talk about symbols <clears throat> unintended. Uh, but so all the ones at the top line are, are actually all different kinds of symbols, uh, except for maybe a cowbell, uh, China symbol, a, a splash symbol, a crash, a crook crash. Ride, ride the bell. Uh, and ride the bell, for example, you're talking about basic symbol, but the top that's right around the middle of your mirror where it's being held in place, the symbol is pretty round thing, right in the center they call that the bell. So it sounds like a bell or something, relatively speaking. And the hi hat where the two symbols are together and going that this is for a drum set, as opposed to if somebody out in the street with a band or crashing the symbols together. You also see uh, different tom tom drums, snare drum. And uh, things that are called ghost notes, rim clicks, uh, drums. Drums got a rim around it, and you, if, you're, if you're tapping on the just on the rim, you get a click. But it's trying to show different name, different kinds of sounds. Um, buzz and doubles is just the way in which it's, it's played. You notice these notes are all on a staff. It's absolutely meaningless, other than it's showing uh, that it's a different. Uh, drum or cymbal, so it's basically showing each instrument as opposed to showing each uh, different tone. It does make different tones, but it's just not the same kind of thing. There's no scale to it. That's the point. Okay, now we get to talk a little bit about MIDI. We'll talk about definition, uh, instruments and sound sources, uh, wave table and then notation for drums. So, I did put this up in the last presentation and realized Boy, this is a big mouthful here, but it's all going on, so we'll see if I can break it apart a bit. Uh, so the primary functions of MIDI uh, include communicating event messages. What that really is saying is MIDI is an electronic mechanism for tying together multiple instruments to pull it all together in one sound, and then synthesizers, and you can have all kinds of, you can get out a piano putting things in, we're going to demonstrate that a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's a mechanism for, for tying all these different Tones together, and so they have to have some way to communicate with each other to say this is happening. One of the main things it has to do is it has to synchronize from a timing point of view. And so they're all electronic time. So that's one of the elements of what MIDI musical instrument digital interface kind of right now. Um, it also it, so messages talk about the notation, uh, pitch, velocity, control signals, the parameters of the 
volume, uh, vibrato, audio panning. Um, if it's if we've got a stereo system, it's going from maybe one side of the room to another. Uh, it, it, it coordinates things like that, so you can make it sound almost like, for example, almost like an orchestra if it's set up that way, where you have you, you, you'd be sitting in one spot and you think there's a, a, a timpani over here and a, a violin section over here. Um, so it's synchronized between the multiple devices and basically a chain of signals produce the sound from a sound source. So you put it from a single sound source. So that's what MIDI is all about. That came about, the first time I got in touch with it was somewhere around 1981, I believe it was. And that's just when I bought this piano. One of the reasons I bought it was not just for my daughter to learn how to play, which she never did, but to have a mini connection to, to try that out. Bought a computer, bought a card, tried to build it in work. Later, that happened. So for users, MIDI enables a single player to sound as though they were playing two or more instruments simultaneously. This is, this is kind of a neat part. You, you'll see this in uh, uh, a band. You see somebody with maybe a couple of different keyboards even, and they're playing two different instruments at once. Uh, that's, that's one way of doing it. Uh, so it's a, it's a protocol, a way of, of talking about what moves between one point and another. It's, so it has a widespread adoption to the music industry, and we still see that on devices. This box here is a couple years old, brand new one that they just came out this month, still has many connections on it. It's got other connections too, a bunch of interesting things on it, but the brand new is $7,000. Yeah, I know, I'm jealous, but I can't have that money again. I played the port once. Anyway, so there's a standard set of instruments that have sounds analyzed and given numbers in, in MIDI. MIDI only takes it so far, there's much more than what we can do with that, that'll be in the next, the next part three of this. But we'll look at, look at this one a little bit. So it, the sounds are stored in the synthesizer or a computer wave table. This little network I have here has got a computer wave table in it, Microsoft gives you that, so we're going to see what that sounds like a little bit. Um, this is this particular box here, this synthesizer is called a TD12. It's just my fans go on this version of stuff. Let's have a look at what it's got. They like to call it a brain. I don't like the color called a synthesizer. I guess for some drummers, it's a brain. Let's see if this works. So, but because it's all digital, they've identified the things. There's, this is uh, the manual, this is the copy of the manual for this thing, but it does show you some things you can do in it. So it talks about um, different channels and things can go on and different kinds of instruments that sound like. This is synthetic stuff, kinds of things. We'll see three instruments, a soprano saxophone, an alto saxophone, a tenor saxophone.